Psalm of David on the to his people he commanded his covenant forever beginning of wisdom. Alleluia, alleluia, Jesus Christ, the King of glory, rose from the dead on the comes in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless, O Lord, the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you. Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, to be the glory forever. Amen. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and you do not, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And the Jews murmured against him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me.
name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. This is the second Sunday of the Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection. And the Holy 50 Days in general answers a very important question. Why did Christ endure all the sufferings and crucifixion for our sake? And the answer is for two basic reasons, which are answered actually during the Sunday readings of the Holy 50 Days. The first one is to give us resurrection. Actually, in the gospel that we read yesterday, it says that he will raise him up at the last day and I will raise him. And he says, I will raise him more than once, actually. And he said it again today. He says, for all he has given me, I should do nothing, but he should raise him up at the last day. The resurrection is not just a grace or a blessing, but it is a reality. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. So it's also a person. So the Father, the Father wanted us to be raised up. And we couldn't raise ourselves up. And because we couldn't raise ourselves, the Son came, became our nature, died in it, and was risen with it. So the first reason is to offer us resurrection. And the second reason he did all of this, so that he's able to leave with us the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, that he can dwell in us and we can be a temple of the Holy Spirit. Because of this, at the end of every liturgy, we should, we ought to walk out with two things. We walk out with Christ dwelling inside us, taking his flesh and blood, and we have the Holy Spirit descending on us and dwelling in us. Actually, to, to, so they're further like to strengthen this point, in the inaudible prayers that the priest prays, asking for the Holy Spirit to descend on the bread and the wine in order to transform them into the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, he not only asks the Holy Spirit to descend on the bread and the wine, but he says, on us and this bread and this wine. So he's asking the Holy Spirit to, dwell, to descend on all of us, not just the gifts. But I wanna, I wanna give like a summary of the readings of the Holy 50 Days so that you can sort of follow along the rest of the Sundays as you hear. The journey of the Holy 50 Days is actually very analogous to the journey of the Israelites coming out of Egypt. God freed the people from the slavery of Pharaoh and allowed them to cross the Red Sea. And then when they crossed the Red Sea, they went uh, 40 years in the wilderness of Sinai. They got hungry, he sent them food. They got thirsty, he sent them water. God was with them, how? How was he guiding them? As a pillar of light. They got lost 40 years in the wilderness and then God directed them until they reached the promised land. And this is the same trip that our mother, the church, takes us on during the Holy 50 Days. The Sunday of the resurrection, Christ allows us to cross the sea, the sea of death. And the true Pharaoh, which is enslaving us all, it was Satan. And where did Satan, or where did Pharaoh end up? In the events of Exodus, he descended into the bottom of the sea. Christ put him under our feet. That's why we say in all the hymns of the resurrection, by death, trampling down upon death. Christ descended into the Red Sea, into Hades to save the righteous. And he opened the gates of brass, like we say in the hymn, and he brought out his chosen ones. So Christ saved us. He made us joyful. He was victorious, and we are victorious in him. But the story doesn't end at the resurrection. Just like for the people of Israel, their sort of journey did not end after crossing the Red Sea. The people uh, of Israel, after they crossed the Red Sea and after Pharaoh drowned, did they immediately find themselves in the promised land? No. Freedom began, but the journey was not done. That's why the first Sunday after the Holy Resurrection is what? On a Sunday, Sunday of faith. We won't be able to enjoy the resurrection without faith. Christ then has given me the resurrection. Why don't I feel raised up? He gave me hope. Why don't I feel hopeful? Christ gave me joy. Why am I sorrowful? If Christ gave us victory, why do I feel defeated? He gave me all of these wonderful things. What is the issue? What's the problem? The problem, of course, is not in Christ, but it is in me. The resurrection of Christ and his coming is for several reasons. He is coming first, like I said, in the first Sunday after the resurrection to correct my faith. 
because of his appearing to Thomas, he made him to be believing rather than unbelieving. So the first question that we asked and answered last week, do I have faith? Am I certain of the things that Christ has done for me or not? Faith is the first step. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ asked St. Thomas, do you believe? The people of Israel crossed the Red Sea and all of them ate of the manna, but most of them were not saved. Almost none of them entered into the promised land. Why? Because they didn't believe. They had words. They had promises from God. God tells them, worship me. They said, sure. And they say a lot of really nice things practically, but they didn't have any faith. Because when push came to shove and they told them, go enter the promised land, they were afraid. So last week, Christ tells us, if you want to enjoy the resurrection, you have to have faith. Do you think, for example, the man who was paralyzed for 38 years that we read about during the great fast, if Christ, who came all the way to him and told him, get up, if he didn't believe, would he have been healed? Never. It's the same for us. Christ came down all the way to us, to our world. Actually, the procession of the resurrection is a symbol of this. The resurrection reaches the entire people, everyone. And he's saying to each one of us, rise up. The question then is, if I believe in this word, I believe he's present and he's the one telling me to get up, I'll rise. But if I don't and I doubt, I'll stay exactly how I am. The first step, like I said, during the Holy 50 is faith. The second thing, which today's reading, which is the same thing that happened to the people of Israel after they crossed the Red Sea, what is the first thing they encountered? Hunger. The second thing we, ha we encounter after lack of faith, we encounter hunger. Lots of people are living in problems or are troubled and uh, maybe they're troubling them, themselves or those around them because of hunger. Like even if you think like a very practical example, when you have a baby, a baby is fun to play with and content and happy and they're smiling and it's, it's a nice time to spend with a, a little child. But imagine that same kid after you make them skip two meals. What kind of child are they going to be like? How would you find them acting? Find them crying, yelling, frustrated, acting out? Not because the kid is bad, but because he's hungry. And because of this, our Lord Jesus Christ tells us the instructions that he gives us today. The gospel tells us that he rose in order to do what? To feed us. I am the bread of life. The hungry are not going to be filled except for in Christ. Next week, the people of Israel, after they got hungry, what happened? They got thirsty. You'll see the reading, you say, I am the living water. So God came to feed us and to quench our thirst. The week after that, Christ tells us that he is light. He came to enlighten our path, just like the pillar of light for the Israelites. Person living in darkness, Christ came to enlighten my way. And actually, speaking of this, the week right after that, he talks about himself as the way, the person who's lost. He can give direction to the person who doesn't know where to go. So these are the five problems or the things that were the problems for the people of Israel. Lack of faith, hunger, thirst, living in darkness, and being lost. And no one could solve all of those issues except for Christ. And because this week he concentrates on hunger, we can think about it for a little bit. How many of our problems, their source is because of hunger. Someone, for example, who steals, why do they steal? Because they're hungry. Person who kills, why do they kill? He's hungry for rest. He wants rest from his enemies. Or even to think more practically, maybe this is not a sin that we're encountering, but why am I rude or disrespectful or mean to people? Because I'm hungry for revenge. Or, or to get back at somebody. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us, if you're hungry, I can fill you. I can satisfy you. How? Actually, the two ways in which I want us to concentrate, especially this week, and how to uh, be filled by Christ is my personal worship and my public worship. My personal worship and my public worship. Let's take first my personal worship. 
my house. People of Israel, when they were eating in the, the manna in the wilderness, how did, he, how did God send it to them? And what did they have to do? God would send it to them when? Before the sunrise? And they had to come out before the sunrise and get their daily allowance of the bread. So that they could go, they could feed themselves, and they can feed their household. If the person didn't do this, and they waited, what would happen to the man? Actually, it would dissolve in the sun. It was kind of like dew. Once the sun was up and it was hot, it was gone. And what would happen then? That day you would be hungry. No food. Because of this, I want us to set for ourselves a goal, for all of us in the morning to give time to God, to receive from Him a helping of the bread of life. Wake up five minutes, ten minutes earlier than you are accustomed to. I promise you, your problems, your hunger will be solved. You will be filled. Stand in front of him and you tell him, I am hungry. I want the bread of life for today. I need the charge for the rest of the day. I'm hungry for you. Feed me. St. Paul tells us that God is rich. But we're hungry and I'm the one who doesn't want to sit with him and gather the manna. By the way, if you think about it, when, when God gave the instructions to the Israelites, it was not possible for, you know, let's say for example, I live next to a couple of houses. It's not possible for like my neighbor to go grab the manna for all of us and then just distribute it to us evenly. God did not allow that. Everyone had to, to, to pick up the manna for their own household. No one else can fill you. No one else can get you this food. You go get it from him yourself. You cannot depend on your spiritual food in the church only or Sunday only. It doesn't work for an infant to get only one feeding a day. How am I feeding myself? So how does my household look? Is my place of worship in my house open or closed? Does it have the agbeya? Does it have midnight praises and songs? St. Carlos the Sixth would do liturgy and pray his psalms and pray midnight praises before most people even woke up. Why? He is gathering the heavenly men. He wanted to gather it before it dissolved. Your heavenly father is gracious, wealthy. And he puts all the food before you. Fill yourself. I said there were two things. My personal worship and my public worship or my worship in church. So the second thing is the altar. I ought to come to liturgy early. Find time and prioritize meeting God early. Don't sort of come to church by accident or whenever is convenient for me. Make Sunday consecrated to the Lord. Read the readings before I come so I can concentrate on the words instead of hearing them for the first time. These are our two places to be filled, our household and our altar. And actually one cannot work without the other. You can't come and tell me, my personal spiritual life with God is amazing, but I don't really ever go to church. I don't need the altar. And you can't have the altar without the house. These are two things working together. So today our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us all of our problems are coming from hunger. When you eat, you get filled. On your own, you're going to find that you start to begin to act differently. Your mood will be different. You will see people in a different way. I, was, uh, I heard a story from uh, Abuna Tadros Malati that he was sharing about this point. He's saying when he was back in Alexandria and he was serving, and they had youth meetings for college people, and lots of people from all over Egypt would come to Alexandria to attend the youth meetings. They were very popular. And at the time, it wasn't super common that the youth meetings had um, boys and girls attending together, but they had boys and girls attending together. So one of the youth, not from the area, 
He went to the meeting and was mixed with guys and girls and he was offended. And he went to the priest and he told him, I'm not coming to this church anymore. And he asked him why. And he said, this is completely inappropriate and unacceptable. He started to judge that this person said this and this person said that. So Abuna told him, actually, it's okay, no problem. If it offends you, uh, I understand. He says, but I have one request from you first. He said, I want you to wake up in the morning, 15, 30 minutes before you have school. I want you to read your Bible. I want you to pray. I want you to do morning doxologies. I want you to pray a couple of psalms. Every morning for a month, try to do something. And then come back and we can see what to do. And actually, the guy came back. After a month, he came to sit down with Abuna Tadras. And the guy said, actually, Abuna, I was wrong. It turns out the people in the church are really good. They've all changed, and I just didn't notice. And Abuna told them, no one changed. They're all the same. But you changed. Because you were filled. It's obvious when a tree is well watered because its leaves are green and its branches are, are tender. Christ doesn't fill us just with earthly food, but he fills us with spiritual food, with his body and blood, with a relationship with God. If we're having trouble celebrating the resurrection of Christ, the question I should ask myself, have I myself risen or not? Did I get filled or not? Am I taking care of myself, feeding myself or not? How am I feeding myself? How many times am I feeding myself? With what kind of food am I feeding myself? Do I feed myself with fast food or nice sit-down meals? What I mean by that is in my prayer, am I rushed? Do I spend time alone with God, adequate time alone with God? Or is it just, I'll just say a small prayer on my drive, or I'll say a small prayer before I eat, but I have no time alone with God. Not to say those things are bad, but it can't be my only source of food. Christ is asking us today, am I filled or not? That's why we all have to pay very close attention to our salvation, to pay close attention to spiritual matters. Christ, he said, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. I don't want to be harsh, but we think about how many hours do I sleep in a day? How many hours do I sit in front of TV or a phone or a computer? How many hours do I spend at work or at school? And then I should ask myself, how many do I spend with God? We tell people, for example, to give God 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes as if we are begging, like beggars for Christ. If we wanted to give God what we deserved, he deserved all of our time. If we wanted to do the minimum and be like the Pharisees, I should give him 10% of my time, two and a half hours. That would be the least. So if it's less than this, how am I filled? And we complain that we are tired and we have problems at home and we're depressed and we can't stand life. And we look to one another to give ourselves rest. And we go to the priest to give us rest. Nobody can fill us except Christ. He is the one who can give us rest. Close the door of your room. Speak to your Father who is in the heavenly places, who sees in the secret. Be filled in the house and be filled in the altar so that you can share in the joy of the resurrection. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.